What's poppin' everybody? Hello and welcome to Popcorn Culture. My name is Ben Carlin and I am your host. Here with me today is my brother Jay, who will be in every episode. Well, it's really no surprise that I've decided to make it back. As is, it is no surprise, Ben, that um, my, I think you probably know this about me, but just in case the listeners didn't know, that my favorite little Debbie snack cake is oatmeal cream pie. <sighs> I know. I can what? see your disappointment. I oh, I bring it up because I notice you're enjoying a a little Deborah cake yourself over there. I am indeed. I am yeah. indeed. So we we grew up and <laughs> little Deborah cake. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. In case anybody's unaware, little Debbie cakes um are like uh, it's it's a brand and, and people like <laughs> everybody everybody who knows is like yeah <laughs> obviously yeah, like, what you, I'm like are you explaining little Debbie cakes? You know what? It, it's like Vegemite could be something that everybody well. knows what it is and then if you don't don't know then it's like well this needs sure. explaining pronto stat because i'm still not sure i get right. it right yeah it's like um, a brand of like um mass produced baked goods mass produced baked goods yeah, yeah precisely and there's there's a whole variety pack of them and growing up little debbie cakes i feel like were a staple inside of our household but yeah. very specifically i feel like we had the nutty bars and the swiss cake rolls yeah. and cosmic brownies right. are the ones that i would say feel like they were the most frequent flyers i think we had those we had like the hostess chocolate cupcakes that had like the little white swirly do on top. Yes. You know, we had those a lot. I liked those. Okay. You say we had those a lot in, in my recollection. I feel like there was like one occasion where mom went to like a, like a Sam's club, like a big box store type yeah. thing and bought like 144 pack. And then we just had them for 144 hostess Cake maybe rolls. I don't know. Maybe you just didn't like them as much as me, or maybe I, I would just eat them all. <laughs> if you never had any, <laughs> you know what? That, that doesn't sound totally unlikely. Um, but, what cupcakes? I know, I know. But no, it goes. It goes back to one of these philosophies. We've we've got <clears throat> our. We talk about our friend um, John from the GMA a lot, and yeah. I, I think we've even brought up this exact thing that his family. I don't even know if they intentionally did, or if it was just a byproduct of like how they lived or something. But one way or another, um, like John is probably like the fittest person we know just like in terms of like like endurance related activities just like, just sort of got like it that. You know? yeah but then on the flip side of things uh whenever you would go over to his house as kids there would always just be like bowls of of candy just sort of like available just sort of like everywhere everywhere yeah and it was like you kind of would like walk in and you're like what is that is like oh is that like some Reese cups like right there in the middle of the room yeah, you want like, some? it's like it's not even halloween or anything like that and it's like yeah they're always there it's like well that's kind of neat but the thing was is that like the family just seemed like they they got like so acclimated to having these candies that it stopped being a treat. And so it was just sort of like, yeah, it's kind of like always there. Yeah, right. Like, yeah, we have candy. Yeah. Of course we have candy. Um, so I think that that was sort of like my relationship with the Little Debbie Cakes for the most part growing up. Like they were they were like like the staple of our packed lunches for whatever years we packed lunch, which this is this, even as I'm like telling this story, I'm like, I bought lunch tons of times. Yeah. Like, but then I also know that I had a whole bunch of packed lunches in there as well. So like, I'm not really sure what years I was deciding to like pack lunch versus buy lunch. I, I, I can like tell I'm, you that as a parent who like Lu- I'm, I'm in the first year where Luke is at kindergarten where you can either pack or buy. Yeah. Right. And for like most of the year, Luke has been like a, a pack person. Okay. And just this week on three days in a row, he's like, I want to buy. I guess like some of his friends have been getting the pizza and he sees the pizza and he's like, I want, you know, I want it. I want it. And so sure. like three days in a row this week, he's been like, I want to buy. And it's been fantastic because on Sunday, um, I had, I just had like some free time at the house and I was like, boy, I guess who's going to be productive me. And like, I was like, I'm going to pack Luke, Luke's lunch for tomorrow tonight. I'm going to wow. pack my gym bag for tomorrow. Tonight. I'm going to pick out my clothes for tomorrow. I was like, I was ready to go. I was like, I'm going to wake up on Monday morning and everything is going to be good to go. I even like pre prepped all the smoothie ingredients, Ben. Wow. You know, like a little pre portion back. I was Monday morning. I was so efficient. It was fantastic. And then Luke came downstairs and was like, I'm buying lunch. And I was like, well, hot dog. Guess what? I don't have to do this. That means not only do I not have to do it today because I did it last night. Now I don't have to do it tomorrow wow. either because it's still packed. And that remained true through Wednesday. And then he eventually took the. So lunch. now, now he took the packed lunch. So now I'm back to we got to make lunch in the morning. But like the the amount, like not like packing Luke's lunch in the morning is this 
It's like it's not hard to do. All I have to do, I like we make them like little ham sandwiches with like the King's Hawaiian rolls. Oh, yeah. That sounds yeah, amazing. Yeah. Pretty good. And it's like it's not hard. It's not hard to pack his lunch. It doesn't take that much time. It's just that like I also have to make breakfast for the twins and get my, you know, breakfast for myself and pack a bag and make the coffee and there's like and get get Luke dressed and get him to the car and there's like a time limit. So it's like a lot's happening and it's like if the lunch isn't on the table, it is like the whole morning is just so much less stressful, which then means like I go into the day less stressed about everything. Like the whole day is better if Luke buys lunch is what I've learned in wow. this week. And it's been like, dude, you got to buy lunch more. <laughs> <laughs> this this arrangement we got going on right now, this? working for working dad. Working for dad, yeah. big time. That's so <laughs> yeah. funny. No, that's the thing too as a parent is that it's like most of the tasks you're doing individually are not very difficult. There's just a lot of them. Yes. And and I, I know what you mean. Like this is like one of those like where even like going through like the like the, the bedtime sequencing and everything, it's always sort of like, it's like, okay, you got to do this, got to do this, got to prep that, got to get this ready, like do that, like whatever, you know, and then it, it's like... um brushing the teeth is is like the one that like Addie always puts up like a big struggle on oh. and she's, she's like you know in opposition to doing it but we are determined to like to make this like a thing yeah um and so like that's that's the one where it's always like like again there's nothing that difficult about it but it almost always means i need to like leave the room temporarily to go get like her toothbrush and like put the you know the kid's toothpaste on it and come back and in that time sometimes she'll be like you know running around her sack and then like which is like you're know, like a giant pillowcase yeah. that kids where in case you don't you're not familiar with those um it's like a zip up blanket <laughs> it's like a zip up blanket but occasionally like you know she's a little clumsy when she's wearing it so then it's like well what if she ends up falling and then if she falls then it's like this whole other thing and then you're like okay calm down from the fall also now we got to do the thing you really don't like doing oh man and, yeah. uh, you're, or, i mean i'm surprised you don't like i'm um, that like I'm trying to, this is like so different than my order of operations where I'm, it would be I, this like, this makes sense too. Yeah. yeah I'm I like, can totally see I'm like, that. you leave, you do, you go to the bathroom and then bring the toothbrush to the other room. Why don't you bring her to the bathroom? <laughs> Usually it's because, okay, so what we normally do, we're going to get back to little Debbie cakes eventually. Yeah. Little, little Deborah cakes. I like that better. <laughs> um, but yeah, so normally our whole thing right now is like, you know, she'll do bath time or whatever. And then usually the big thing right now is that she doesn't want to get in the bath. But then once she's in the bath, she doesn't want to get out of the bath. Yeah. And do it so, in the bath. We have done it in the okay, back yeah. before. Yeah, yeah, That That actually is the pro tip. And yeah. sometimes it's just like depends on how bath time's going as to whether or not that happens. But that's right, a good right, point. Right. I've done that. Um, but then a lot of times what's happening is you're like, you're taking her out of the bath. I wrap her in a towel. And then I'll like go in do like the diaper change uh, or put a diaper on her pajamas put her sack on or whatever and then and then it's usually like okay time to brush teeth before we like read books and yeah so that's that's why it's landing there but i could also see where it would make sense to just not leave the bathroom entirely but then if she's like wrapped in a towel and she's all wet and everything it's just kind of hard to do so bathtub i'm just gonna i'm just yeah. gonna do it in the bathtub there you go one. yeah that's what we that's yes yeah, that's, that's my it's usually where we do it um otherwise yeah we should get them at the sink but they're a little they can like stand up and you know be a little bit better about it about do, do you days. ever brush your teeth in the shower me? Yeah, you. Yes, yeah, you. Wow, no, right there. The no, other person I'm talking to. I don't I am I want to say there was a period where I was trying it. Like it's so funny because it's like they're all like bathroom related rituals, but to me there is something so odd about the toothbrush being like 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 sitting on like it's the edge not of even like, having the toothbrush in there; it's having the toothpaste in there. That seems it, weird to it me. Just, it just doesn't. Belong. It doesn't seem like it fits there, even though like you have a place to like spit and stuff. So the floor, yeah, you know, you just fill your, you can just rinse with the with the shower water. You know, <laughs> you, you can spit wherever you, you want. Can spit there. wherever you <laughs> want in there, man. It isn't. I'm not. I'm not totally opposed to it. Um, this is also like the day I realized. Like, I could just bring like my face wash into the shower, like instead of doing it at the sink and making a giant mess. Oh my gosh! You yeah, know? that, yeah, that, that like, one seems. Wait, was there? There was never a point in time, surely, where you were washing your face in the sink and then getting in the shower. I think uh, yeah, I had. Uh, there were definitely times I think like in high school and stuff where like I would like take a shower, go get dressed, go back, wash my face. What I know seems silly now. It, that seems silly you know? always. Yeah. Well, yeah. this is from someone who's <laughs> listened to your own operations. Ben. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know that's totally fair. It's just, no, I just that that is just a funny one. No, you know um, what? Have you tried telling her that her teeth will turn yellow? No. Oh well. <laughs> just put the fear of of not the fear, the truth. <laughs> Well, I mean, the truth and the fear can be simultaneous. Yes, but still. <laughs> but still. But no. still, let me tell you what. That, that like, not that Luke was ever bad at it, but he, like, you know, if he, like, at one point, like, there, there was a point where he was, like, a little more resistant to it, and he's like, look, you need to do this, because otherwise, like, your teeth will get, like, 
like yellow and like it'll be gross. And he was just like, what? And like, he's been pretty good about it since. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is this is where I feel like uh, my primary anxiety dream, like the one that happens to me the most mm. often is some version of like my teeth all falling out. Uh-huh. So like in, in the movie Inside Out, there's like a moment where like I think like fear is like watching the dreamscape or whatever. And it's like, and teeth are going to probably be next. Here it is right yeah. on cue. You know, and I'm like, uh, yes, right on cue. Like that's the one. And th- this is like one of those. Where, and, and I wish I could think of more examples on the fly, but I know there have been so many in life where somebody told me something bad might happen if I don't do this thing and the the level to which I took it like so absurdly seriously yeah was almost just like like I think that there's like just residual fear from like childhoodness of not brushing my teeth and my teeth like rotting or something like that and so now it's like like is the is the worst consequence that like Addy has really good oral hygiene (laughs) No, I mean that's a that's a that's a great consequence. It yeah, just, I mean it just lives with you. That's yeah. all. <laughs> but like, <laughs> but it's something you need to know. Like it is true. That's true. But yeah. it's, it's <laughs> you can't not brush your teeth. <laughs> no, I. I <laughs> I'm I'm following. I'm just also been. I feel like I've been impacted by the by the fear. Like it's, it's like I didn't outgrow. I mean, because you're right. It's it's not that it's not like something bad won't happen. It's just sort of like uh, it, it's like I don't know. I. I feel like it's like a good way to like get them like, oh, wow, I don't want that to happen. But then as an adult, I, I feel like I've not stopped taking it like too seriously. Well, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, there you go. I um, mean, I'm not trying to say like, like it's, I don't know. It's like, it's one of those things where it's like, like at some point, I'm sure she's going to ask you, why do we have to brush our teeth? You know, and it's like you wouldn't like withhold the truth just out of fear that it might make her nervous about not doing it. I it feels like a lead, you would it feels like a leading question <laughs> I don't I don't think that I would use a fear tactic uh, as a method of getting her to be <clears throat> motivated to do it I think she's not going to know the consequences of not brushing her teeth this is what's going to happen <laughs> <laughs> Like, she's gonna meet someone with yellow teeth and be like I don't understand how does this even happen to people be like you don't brush your teeth that's what they just haven't brushed their teeth and they'll be like what what excuse me. <laughs> Anyway, 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 so but back to but speaking of good good oral hygiene, I um yes, I I I am I'm a I'm now I'm back to I'm so thrown off. <laughs> You're like contemplating like what do I need to tell Addison about life? It's like this is like one of those things where I feel like my under- I don't even know. I don't, I'm like I'm like lost inside of my own conversation <laughs> and my know. own motivations, and I'm like, and I never mind. It's fine now. And now I'm like worried that I'm like attacking your parenting style at the same rate. Or no, it's you're like, not at all. I'm mostly just messing with you because okay. it's like I can tell you're like I'm <laughs> frazzled. Like, I can tell you're like going in circles in your brain. Like, and you wait. Uh. <laughs> you're like, those are some good points, but I feel like my points are good too. But. Wait, <laughs> but, but it's like I want her to brush her teeth. That's all. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, yeah. so I, I'm just going to encourage fun and happiness and exactly. good times attached yeah. to the teeth brushing process. And maybe she'll just think it's fun for her whole life and be like, <laughs> why would you not do it? It's the best time ever. It's the best time ever. Dad dances it's the whole joy. time I, I brush my teeth. Like, why would I not do it? Do you? No, I don't. But I can start. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of a new plan as a way to like okay. reinforce positivity <clears throat> instead of the fear of of having these, um, you know, night terrors essentially attached to teeth do you think you're like, but I've never thought that when people say their teeth are like, like when people have anxiety dreams about their teeth falling out, I've never thought that was the manifestation of people having an anxiety during the day that something would happen to their teeth. No, I think it is. Oh, for, for me, it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I would just assume like, on, okay, that is news to me. Like I've always thought this is, just, this is just a common anxiety dream. Like anxiety makes you dream about this, whether or not you're concerned about it happening in real life. No, I, for me, I think that like, like sometimes I think like the other anxiety dream I have very often is this one where it's like, I'm in college and it's like the end of the semester. And for whatever reason, I didn't go to like my English or math or science class or whatever for the entire semester 
professor and I'm going in and like if I don't pass, it will like prevent me from graduating. And all of a sudden it's like there's no way for me to know all the information I'm going to need to know on the test and I'm going to fail. And that means I won't graduate. And usually that one, it's like like throughout the day, I'm not like worried that someone's going to like roll up at my house and be like, by the way, you didn't actually complete college. Give me back your diploma. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, like, like I'm not concerned that that one is going to happen necessarily. Uh, not even necessarily. I'm not afraid that that's going to happen at all. That one is usually hitched though to something very similar, which would be some kind of, um, like feeling like I'm not doing enough to complete a specific task sure, or something like that, which, okay. you know, here at like super Carlin brothers, like where we've just constantly got like a, like a never ending lineup of the next piece of content to be filmed. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't surprise me. And cause, because there are certainly days where it's like, okay, we gotta, we gotta get stuff done and a lot of it in today. Yes. There are <laughs> um, those days. <laughs> so those are, those are probably where those come from is like, okay, we just, we just gotta get stuff done. That's stuff all. done, man. Yeah. I, I haven't been going to class is what it feels like yeah um but no with the teeth one i i think it's a genuine fear of something happening to my teeth oh okay yeah, yeah. that Man. one that one's definitely well, like i want to know if everyone's afraid of stuff happening to their teeth or if it's just sort of like a common anxiety dream and you personally have that that regular common anxiety dream and are afraid of something happening to your teeth could be could, could be, be. Cause I'm, all, I'm also not very i mean it's it's a good point because like um i'm also not very good like with anything like like i don't like people like touching like their eyes or something like sure like, yeah like, like, watching people yes. like put their contact lenses in can be like a little bit like whoo man okay like i'm always like that's like the main thing for me i'm like i'm like grateful for my vision not being um poor to where i would need contacts yeah because that's that's like i i feel like i would really really struggle with and but maybe it would just be exposure therapy and you get so good at it so quickly that it's like okay not a big deal anymore right um but i also don't have dreams about eyes maybe it's a bad example i don't know i'm not really sure what i'm really trying to say is i like zebra cakes oh yeah right (laughs) little debbie cakes we used to sometimes have them um, Jennings had bowls of candy. Yes, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. And you, what are your what's your favorite thing about Debbie cakes as an adult? I think it's the question we were trying to answer. That is the big question. So I think the big thing is like I even remember Dad would like come home sometimes like during like his dinner hour and he would like be like really excited to have like a little Debbie cake. I'm like Dad, that's like like lunch dessert. You know, it's like right. That's like we have that like every day in our in like our lunch bags or whatever. It's like mm-hmm. I, it never. I was like it surprises me that you're like looking forward. to to the part of the day where you go and have like a Swiss cake roll or something right. like that. I'm like, it, it just doesn't feel like, like a, like a really good dessert. Yeah. Um, but I think now what is happening is as an adult and the infrequency, because we always had these like specific ones at our house growing up. Yeah. I think those probably still would feel less like treats than like the ones we didn't have growing up, which is why I think I like zebra cakes. But literally now I will like sometimes like have a box at my house and I will be like so excited to like put Addie to bed. And I'm like, I'll like look at Alice. And I'm like, do you want to have a zebra cake? <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's like, oh man, oh, well, we, are, we, go. we are cutting loose. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's <laughs> living <Yeah. laughs> zebra cakes. I know that's the other thing too. Here at the office, we have like a what I would like to say is a robust selection of snacks. There's no doubt. There's yeah. no doubt. We do. We do. I have. Um. I've recently introduced bananas into our snack rotation here wow, at the look office. Look at you go. What, what a what a health nut. I know. I know. And now it's like I, like specifically because I would get to like three or four every day and be like, it's time for a little Debbie cake. And it was like one of those like. O'clock. And it's just like this is not helping me. Like I don't need to eat this right now. But like I'm so hungry and or else I'll just start like going. I'll like grab a bag of chi- like something bad uh-huh. that like I was like you know what I can how can I like just like replace this like uh like hunger with something a little bit better that will like fill me up and just sort of like get me through that moment and yes bananas is my answer and it has been working great so far <laughs> that's amazing that's yes. amazing no i think that, that that and that does track in my mind as well because i did the same thing like where i used to drink just like just so much soda all yeah. the time and then when i was able to just sort of like sub in i think what i really wanted was like i mean i'd like to have like just like you know something to sip on at all times but like i think carbonated water just ended up being like it, it like filled the void for me right it's it, like it feels like soda yes exactly but like it's water <laughs> but, but it's water yeah. yeah we actually just got that was the other thing we got for the office is because it's third floor walk up we were constantly having to like lug like just cases of LaCroix 
up to oh, the yes. office space. Um, and so we just recently purchased one of these like soda stream things. Yes. And I feel like it has been, this is, this is like my standing <clears throat> desk, like where sometimes I feel like there are ideas that I'll have where I'm like, if I could just engage in this new activity, it'll improve my life so much and it's going to be so much better. And I'm going to be living like a healthier lifestyle and blah, blah, blah. And the standing desk was one of those where it was kind of like, I think what I was really seeing was like people on like Instagram or whatever who were like, how to live a more efficient life, do a standing desk. And it was sort of like, okay, I'm going to be that efficient person. So I bought like a, it, we literally just had like a regular desk at the time that we put like a, like a, 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 a lifter yeah. thing on yeah. and it started doing that standing desk life. And I just like, that was like one where I, like I, I've always, I've brought it up before, but it's mostly just cause I'm proud of myself because it was like, I was like, I'm going to make this change about my life. And then I did. And then I just stuck then, with it yeah. and I've never looked back. Do you feel like it's improved your life? I, th- I think it has. Yeah. I used to get tired at work a lot more. That was the main thing. It's like oh, it would get to that same three o'clock hour that you're talking yeah. about, like little Debbie o'clock. And maybe what I was even doing was going and getting a snack, which would then make me drowsy. And then right. I would want to like just basically fall asleep on my keyboard. Mm. And so I think standing desk definitely keeps me much, much more awake nice. and so that's been a good one and then so the other one yeah we got the we got the soda stream in the office here which i've just been doing like the like the bubbly drops to make it like lime flavored yeah lime flavored water carbonated water yeah, yeah. um and i must go through <coughs> i don't know like like two liters of these things yeah. a day yeah well so i've been yeah it took me like a it, yeah i have also been doing the soda stream thing and we've got like some of like the soda syrups and whatever yes and so i've been doing the uh like the diet cola one and at first i was like oh well like i don't want to do like the soda ones because that's just like drinking soda then but like you look at like the nutrition and i am like i feel like there's some sort of like trickery at play or something oh do you because, yes because like this is just water and then you just put the bubbles in it and then you look at the back or you look at the, the nutrition facts on like the like diet cola soda syrup or whatever and it's just zeros all the way down and it's like well, there's gotta, gotta be something in gotta, there gotta be something there's gotta be something in there like there must be something in there because it's changing the flavor of the water and it's changing the color of the water so like what's it like i feel like there's no way this isn't like i i'm like there's no way this like just isn't bad for me there's got to be something bad about this it, it does yeah I, you know? I, no i understand that i mean but it, it says zero so i'm like maybe it's not maybe i'm maybe i'm winning and i found like a super hack here right yeah as long as it's working that's all that matters well it's like i don't know i don't know if it's working i'm drinking a lot of it <laughs> <laughs> but is it bad for me? Am I doing a health food? I, is I, exactly. Am yeah. I doing a health or not? Okay. I don't know. Here's my question. For I don't you. want to be unhealthy. <laughs> Why is it the case? Because this seems mm-hmm. so counterintuitive to the entire human experience dating back for millennium. Yeah. Why on earth is it the case that some of the most popular beverages on the planet earth are like brown water? Oh, I know it is weird. If someone like if someone pours you a Coke, it's like, wow, that is that looks tasty. But if someone just if I didn't see them poured, if I didn't know what it was, if someone just handed me a glass of Coke colored liquid and was like, enjoy, I'd be like, oh, yeah, right. (laughs) Are you kidding? I don't think so. Pass. (laughs) I am not. I am not. This brown water. Right. <laughs> it's like it, I mean, this seems like the most fundamental thing that we would have learned going back to like like you know cave people days would be like clear moving water good brown murky water bad right you know but it's like but for some reason and that's the other thing too it's like i don't know if maybe it's like the bubbles that help but like you know when they show like the like before the movie theater starts or whatever and they show like that like you know coke or pepsi ad or whatever yeah. where it's like making all the the ice all the fizzy and, noise yeah. and stuff like that it's like they even like well like you know pour glass and you see all the bubbles popping up and i'm like they really do make it look so tasty you know Yes, they but, do. But, but it's but it's dark liquid colored beverage. I know. It, yeah, it doesn't make sense to me either. Yeah, like. But then what's also strange to me is that like if you were to give me a Coke and and somebody were to say like this is a Coke, we removed what makes it like dark colored and it is now just completely right, it's clear, just clear, clear. Like like if you like imagine Sprite except it would taste like Coke, I would find that to be completely off putting. I know. I'd be yeah. like. No thanks. Sounds like I, I am. Think so. I am. I am completely uninterested. There's the 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 whole the color, the flavor, the fizz. It's all. It is all so aligned in my brain. Yes, you know? I know. I know. And like I. I can't tell though that if you were to go to like an alien planet or something, and they did the exact same thing, but Coke was like like neon green. 
you know, yeah. like, like, and that was just their normal for exactly the same product, but it's just what they've always known and how they've always like imagined it and associated these like specific right. flavors. But then I'm trying to think of like something but else. Like we have like neon green sodas. We do know? have. Ne- that's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But like the Coke flavor, the Pepsi flavor, like the cola flavor feels yeah. much. It feels, it feels brown. Yeah. It feels brown. It feels brown. It feels you know? in, It's the right color. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even though it doesn't seem like it should. But what do you think? Is this unhealthy in some way? Do, do I think when you're drinking something yeah. healthy in some way? The diet cola, the diet cola soda syrup in the fizzy in the soda stream. Well, so one, I haven't had it okay. at all. Haven't haven't tried it, nor have I looked at the container. I I suspect that it's pretty good. Um, but this is another one of those things where I feel like there was a period of time where there was like like um like Coke Diesel, like the standard, like regular yeah, Coke. Yeah, regular and, and Coca-Cola, then, red can. And then there's like Diet Coke, which are sort of like, okay, that must be healthier, right? And there's then there's Coke Zero. The superior and it's like, product. And it's like, yeah. okay, which of those three is the most healthy? <laughs> right, you right, know, like, right. Because it's like, it's like, it feels like a little bit like none of them is the answer. I know, right. It seems like <clears throat> you just shouldn't drink any of them. Probably. Maybe. 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 I, I think. I don't know. Um, I don't but know. The, that's the, that was like when Coke Zero came out. I was like, hold up, but wait. Why why not why would not just apply whatever logic you did to Coke Zero to Diet Coke? Or is it the fact that like you're doing it slightly differently, achieving like a new a, like a, a new end product and people there's already such a substantial following around Diet Coke that like you can't like you can't get rid of that one. Well like one of them's like zero calorie and one of them's like zero sugar. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So maybe maybe there's like some some dietary right. like applications there. Yeah. That could, that I think could come I think play. Coke Zero tastes more like regular Coke. Okay. I've never had a, I've never had a Coke Zero before. Yeah. Really? Yeah, Not one. You, man, well, you're yeah. missing out. Uh, that is. I don't. I mean, I don't drink standard Coke almost ever because Coke Zero just exists. And, and okay. I don't not that I drink that too often either, but we normally have we normally have a box of Diet Coke and a box of Coke Zero at my house at all times because Beth's mom likes Coke Zero and our mom likes Diet Coke and whenever they're babysitting we like to have whatever they want on hand. So. No, I know. Yeah, we do the same <laughs> thing. Yep. Yeah, it's like you got to make sure that like when 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 the grandma the, the grandma'am the, the grandma'am <laughs> Addie is started referring to our mom by our mom's first name mary no. <laughs> <Amazing>. <laughs> so it, it is really funny yeah she'll, she'll say mary and and papa john which yeah. is what our dad goes by um which i which i found to be hilarious maybe she'll eventually include the the nana there in the front of it yeah yeah i'm sure on. at some yeah. point yeah yeah but either which way no so we do the same thing we got we got them we got them stocked in the house i don't know i i feel like your beverage that you're drinking right now i assume is is maybe um, not as unhealthy as like as e- any of the products we just described. What, healthier than Diet Coke or Coke Zero. Yes, I think healthier than those. I then, but then I just have like the the droplets that just make like it like a hint of lime flavor in right. my otherwise yeah. carbonated water, mm-hmm. which I would assume is maybe mildly healthier than that. Um, I don't know what the syrup I'm using is though. It's yeah, right. It's you know, like, I don't know either. Th- this is this is like one of those things where that was the other thing too. Is that it seemed like like there was Coke and then Diet Coke and then it was kind of like okay, like Diet Coke is an improvement over like regular Coke from like a health standpoint. And then it seemed like there was a whole phase there where it was like, no, pretty much the sugars we use in diet Coke are like their own kind of like <laughs> their own kind of problem, their, yeah. their own kind of problem. And I, but then it also seemed like maybe the, like that got like recanted, but then you're all, I don't know. That's like where like all my conspiracy theories come into play. And I'm just sort of like, I have no idea who's, who's, who's got it right here. Right. You know? Yeah, I know. Cause like part of me is like, I'm enjoying this and it like tastes, it's I, like, in my brain right now, it's like, oh yeah, I made it myself. I mixed it all together. It's just, it's, I, I poured the water and added the thing and it's like, like the reason I don't drink like soda and stuff because like I feel like it's bad for me, but then I'm like, I'm making this and I'm like, well, it tastes exactly like what I miss about soda, but like is it, but it, and this is maybe not bad for me because then like if that's true, then it's just a giant win win, but it feels too good to be true. And if like it feels too good to be true, it probably is. It probably is. And like, there's no way I'm just winning here because other everyone would just do this, right? So here's the here's the the grand philosophical question that that I always come back to, which would be like, you know, is like you think about. Uh, like eras in history or like the wild wild west where it was sort of like yeah you know like things were just happening but like the wild wild west usually generally refers to like there were not a lot of regulations it was just sort of like go out there yeah. you know like there wasn't like a lot of like oversight it was too much land to cover so it's like stuff could just go down yeah and i often wonder if you were to like fast forward 200 years from now and see what the world is like then because 
like what we are I, I tend to think that like if you if you imagine like a teeter totter I, I feel like in terms of technological advancement and availability of products in like a global scale mm-hmm. we're really only like in the first hundred years of that being a thing sure ha- like hard stop yeah you know like like for the most part everything and everything that is available to us is all fairly new yeah um so the question would be, you know, over 200 years of time, like I would, I would almost make the argument that 200 years from now, things will just be more heavily regulated than they currently are now. And what will be interesting is then if they look back on now and what they like, what stands out as like, yeah, this was just allowed back then. Yeah. You know, like you people just, just did it. <laughs> people just do it. Yeah. It was like, you know, like they, yeah, people would just mix soda syrups at the office and it was like a totally normal, regular thing. You could just bring it home and people would do it and they didn't understand why they were getting cancer. And you're like, oh, oh boy, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, the, the, the wild, wild 2000s. The wild, wild 2000s, man. They didn't know what was going on back then. I have no, that's probably not true. I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just uh, spitballing future things. Right. 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 Just, yeah. just trying to, just trying to take a stab at a headline or something. Yeah. Or textbook header a textbook header yeah there yeah. you go they'll have books in the future as <laughs> if. But, but maybe yeah. they will maybe, maybe they'll be like you know th- this is the stage where they thought right. we didn't <clears throat> need them this is this is um so my my uh uh when you enter my home i have like one of those like like touch key um locks so i don't have to carry like a key to my yeah. house it's just like a like a like a digital deadbolt yeah and this is one of those instances where i feel like there was an era of time where everybody thought touchscreen everything was better than analog anything yes. because it was like it was new it was shiny it was like you know it was it had like the perfect like gloss surface or whatever um and this is also true for like volume control inside of your vehicle like yeah analog volume control always superior to a touch tr- the touch screen yes volume control yes uh, or even the same for like uh your your uh heating and cooling in your vehicle it's always better yeah. to have knobs like because you can turn them exactly where you want it and like otherwise you're kind of like staring at the screen and there's like no physical like thing to work yeah. off of but <clears> so <throat> what drives me nuts is i got i i bought into the touch screen uh deadbolt lock for okay. my house and it's like one of those where like within three weeks of having it i was like an analog one is simply better yeah. because when i get home the way the sun is positioned in the sky is it is like blaring onto the deadbolt on my back door okay which means it's like it's like heat sensitive and so if the sun is just like hammering it then it's so hot that it can't detect my finger pushes right oh and no and then, you know, it's so like I'm looking at it and then it's also got like a massive glare over it. So I can't even like quite see the numbers or like which one I'm pushing or anything. And so it's like ever since I've had it, I'm like, this is less good. It's and less so good. Sometimes I'm like, okay, this is an area where it was like, oh, just because we had an like, advancement doesn't mean the application was always better than what we were doing before. Right. Like we already had it figured out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it was going fine. Right. It was going like fine. The, the key and lock can't not work. Yes, yeah, that's the right. other thing too. Is like I once got locked out of my house because my deadbolt battery died. Right, and so then it was like one of these weird things where I was like, I don't have a key. Right, you know, and like I ended up like looking out that like one of my screened-in porch doors just happened to be unlocked. Wow. Um. Yeah. So I was able to like go in through my screened-in porch and get into my house. But otherwise, I, I mean, it was like I was gonna have to like have like a locksmith come out. Oh my gosh. Because it was be like so embarrassing. I know. It was yeah. like I'm, <laughs> I'm stuck in my house. So now every time it's like low battery, I'm like I'm on it. I hear you. I hear you. Less I got it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. That's yeah. funny. Transition. Sure. <laughs> Okay, Jay, here's a question. Yeah, okay. Oh, did you have a thought? No, go for it. Do you believe in signs from the universe? Oh, goodness. Goodness, 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 goodness. That I mean, that's a that's a either very deep or very wide question. I don't know. I think you, um, I, you, you can slice it however you I like. I know. So this is this is like a, it it is interesting. Okay, so like in the um in the in the recent past, I was like almost convinced I was getting signs like this because like or like from the universe or God or whatever. So, so like something was, something. was trying to yes, speak like to you. I, like because it just seemed like it suddenly came out of like almost nowhere and like it was in uh, like but when when Beth and I 
when Beth was pregnant with the twins, like we had come up with, you know, uh, like boy names and girl names. And so like, you know, we, we already, you know, Luke, we already had Luke. Luke was a boy. And we we're like, oh man, it'd be so like, we have like two chances to get a girl here, you know, like we'll have a boy and girl. Right. And then obviously we just have three boys and they're all amazing. Hooray. Uh, but so we never get to use like our girl names or anything. Right. But so like, just like out of the blue one day, like it just seemed like I think we went, it, it, you know, uh, it was it was related. It started when we were at church in the morning. OK. And the the particular um, whatever passage they were going over was about how the woman in the Bible, Elizabeth, which is Beth's full name. OK. Just like ended up having a child like later in life or something. And it was like, oh, well, what do you know? The great. Cool. See ya. Right. Right. But so that was that was the start of my day. And then like. Later that day, we're at the grocery store and like Luke wants to pick out a balloon. And he's like, I want that one. I want that like that pink one up there. And I like picked it down and it said like, congratulations, it's a girl. And it was like, well, that isn't that funny. Ha ha. You know, right. Right. <laughs> but then, right. Like, um, like then we were like watching uh, a show that night and like the main character like had the same name as one of the girls we'd picked out. And I was like, man, this is like a bunch of like this is like we, you know, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> and, like, like, yeah, like, well, what is yeah, what is like, going, going on? on? Yeah. And then like the, you know, I think even like I went down and like I pointed that all out to Beth and then like we went upstairs and we turned on the TV and we put on like a different show and it was like some music came on. She was like, this is cool music. And it was like music composed by your girl's name. And it was like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> That's like nuts. it was like it was like all of this stuff happening on the same day. I was like, are like, are we like supposed to like have a girl or something? Like, are we supposed to be having another baby? Like, what is going on? Yeah, oh, like- and then like Beth went to church like the next day and like for the first time ever, like Luke and Nick and Nate like went with her. She went like that later that night. Okay, like, okay. She does like youth group stuff at night. And so like Luke and Nick and Nate all went with her and like I dropped her off and like went and got dinner and then like I came to pick them up later. And so I went inside and like uh, Nick and Nate and Luke are playing air hockey um, on one of the tables in the church with this like um, with this little girl who has like you know pale skin and hyper blonde hair. Okay, and they like you know that it's like it's the same name and it's like what it, like <laughs> no it just, way it was so weird. I was like I, I was like I I don't know what's going on. I don't like what this is like you know and you're, it's like happening at church you know like and you're like is like am I being spoken to by God right now? Like, like what is like, you know, like am I, is it just a bunch of coincidences or like, am I supposed to do something with this information or like, what's like seriously. And then like, even the next morning I was going to the gym and I was just like, I don't like, that was so weird yesterday. Like, I don't know. Like I, I remember thinking like, you know what? Like, if something else happens, maybe, maybe it's like, I don't know. I don't know. Could have just been a bunch of coincidences. And I'm like, sort of like almost like praying in the car. Like, you know, like if there was something else, just like, just, you know, what, what, would, what would it be or whatever? I, Cause I don't even know. Right. You right. know, I'm like, I like finish that thought, get out of my car and like start walking towards the door. And our trainer gets out of the car and he has two little kids and his little girl just runs up and hugs me and she has never done it before ever. Oh and my like, gosh. I've seen her for years, you know? Yes. Like, and I was just like, <sighs> I don't know what's going on right now. (laughs) It feels like something. I'm like, what is what is happening? (laughs) This is so unusual. So then I was just like, I don't, I don't know what's supposed to be going on. Um, yeah, I was gonna say, is like, there was a part of me, like, as you were going through this, I was like, are you about to elemental surprise me no, right now? No, I am not about to like, elemental surprise like, you. Hold up, I am like, not about to elemental surprise you right now. Um, yeah, no, we we're, we're not expecting or anything okay, like okay. that. Um, but it was just like very weird. I remember I was going to therapy. And I was like, even talking to my therapist about it. it's like I don't know what's happening or if I'm just like having a bunch of coincidences. This wasn't even on my mind. Like I wasn't like I am good with three. I haven't slept in six years. Years, you know, <laughs> right, right, like, right, right. Uh, you know, we're pretty ready to be done. And, and, and then, so what she flipped it around on me and she was like, okay, so like if, if you were hoping for like, if you were like hoping for it, like if you said, you know, give me a sign, what would have to happen for you to like think, yes, that was a sign. And I was like, that's a great question. Like, and I'd like, I feel like I've been able to apply that to a bunch of other things. Like, oh, I'm so like, you know, like, like, oh, I'm so afraid of failing and it'll be like, you know, but like, okay, but like, what would succeeding look like? And you're like, well, that's a good question too. 
So, I, like, yeah. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's a really good point. Yeah, because I, I do think so often, like, you can find yourself in this situation where it's like you you're wanting something like greater out of whatever you're you're after or whatever and you're like oh my gosh i'm just not doing enough and then and then like you know you yeah you flip it and it's like well what does it look like to be doing enough because then like that could even give you a finish line like, exactly or, or like, a, like yeah. a goal like a exactly. specific thing yeah so it's like uh, that and that that just did make me think i was just like i don't know it, that yeah it's like if if you prayed for a sign and then you got one like what would it take for that for you to think that was real for that was a sign and not just like you like manifesting it or like wanting to see something or is it the same thing? Right. You know, right. No, I, yeah, I understand. I understand. No, it's very interesting. And, and so that's the thing too, that I think is really interesting about it because like, I feel like there's a possibility that looking for signs in the world can almost be like your brain's own version of like horoscopes a little right, bit. And yeah. Like, like this is, this is sort of like the, the question of the curiosity to me, because I think sometimes it's like, like I, have I think for most of my life struggled to know like exactly what it was that like I wanted out of like my life experience yeah you know so like a lot of times it's really helpful for me to be around somebody who has like extremely clear extremely concise goals and it's probably like part of even like the you know the people pleaser thing a little bit where it's like it's like I don't really know what I want to do so if you can tell me very clearly what you want to do then like I know how to mold myself to that particular thing. Right. But that's where I think sometimes like if you feel like you're seeing signs, it's, it's almost like when you read a horoscope, almost anybody could read any horoscope. And usually what is happening inside of these is that they're written cleverly enough that almost everything is, is vague and highly applicable right. to any person. <clears throat> so as you're going through it, it's like, you know, it's like, oh, you're, you're going to experience like a major life change in, in, in like, like soon. It's sort of like, you could apply major life change to lots of different stuff. Right. You yes. know, it's like, like it doesn't necessarily like you, you could probably find the shoe that fits whatever it's telling you is, is the thing that's like upcoming on the horizon or whatever. Yeah. But then, so like what, what I'm curious about, like when you're looking for signs out there in the world, or if you're even like asking the universe to give you a sign to be like, like, Hey, let me know. It's like, is, is it ever, the case that all of a sudden you're you're much more like dialed in and looking for things that might fit right what you're asking exactly it to do right yeah and so then like then that becomes like the curiosity where it's almost like well you know now now all of a sudden like I could probably nothing not even to say that you'd be like like would spin it necessarily but it's like if if like our trainer's daughter had just come up and hugged you any other day would that have just been like a like no oh, that was cute right. you know like, i know yeah you know, like you don't you wouldn't have thought of that like as like wait a second she hugged me i like maybe that means something you know it's like right. it's like because you have the it's like specific set of like lenses on it's almost like you're interpreting it in in some new capacity oh i mean yeah that's the question yeah that's the question that's the question are you yeah. interpreting it or is that or is it happening or is that the sign yeah 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 i know this and that, that's what it seems like how do you how are you supposed to know that yes this is that or is it just like no i mean yeah, or, or is it like yeah you've started looking for it and now it's just sort of like you're seeing signs everywhere right sort right of thing. yes exactly yeah. i don't know what the answer is <laughs> i know i know no. it's like and of course it's like yeah this is what people have been trying to figure out forever i know <laughs> Maybe, or, i know yeah well the, and that was the thing too is that like i i had like a similar situation where i was i was like driving home the other day and like it, it was it was just really weird because I, I like got in my car and there was like you know like a like a deer that had been like struck that was like in the road which was just like really sad but it was like in its placement was like so central and specific to like where i was going and it was just sort of like huh like that's so like you know like a like a a very remarkable specific detour type thing. And then like, as I kept going down the street, I ran, at, I got this like, you know, three way intersection where there was like a cop that had like stopped in the middle of the road to go and like help somebody whose like vehicle had like stalled out or whatever. Yeah. And because like the cop stopped in this particular part, instead of going my usual way home, I had to take this like big long detour around like through this like crazy labyrinth of like neighborhoods because yeah. it was like such a spot where it's like, there's no other main road I could just like deviate, like, you know, deviate off into or even just get around him otherwise. And and I'm like, is, is anything like trying to prevent me from getting where I'm going right now? And then like, you know, it's so like, as I'm thinking that, like I turn the corner to like get on my road and like all of a sudden there's just like this other weird backup that's going on for like another like five minutes. And mm -hmm. I'm like, man, this is so like, what is going on? Like, so, like on this drive home, I've run into like five different things, all of which have like really 
slowed my process. And right. I'm like, like, is something attempting to like tell me where to go or like turn, right. turn left or something? Like, you know, and it's, it's, and this was weird. And, and I think maybe the reason that stood out is because there wasn't anything specific that I could even think was trying to like be communicated to me. Like I wasn't right. like asking the world for a sign, but like as I'm going through this journey, I'm like, it feels like a lot of really weird chance things are all happening in all, a row all in a row yeah, yeah. And, and all of which are like slowing me down specifically yeah. like that's that's the end result of all of them um so anyway that's what i just thought it was kind of interesting because I, i've gone through life definitely before where there's have been instances like where like I, I will like basically say you know if this thing happens then that must be my sign to do this instead and then sometimes the thing will happen and then I will second guess it because I'm like, well, I didn't expect it to actually like happen. I know. Right. Like, like you're almost giving yourself an out. And then it was like, Oh wait. Um, (laughs) yeah, right. Yeah. Now. Mm. Oh, well, okay. Well that, that, that unusual thing did come to pass. So it's like, this is where like, I always imagine like a, like the grand puppeteer in in the, the, the cosmos or whatever that like, you know, if if there's somebody who's like specifically looking down on your life and attempting to send you these message, like I always think of the movie, like interstellar. Have you seen that one? No. Oh, wow. You haven't seen interstellar. No. Shoot. Dang. Uh, no. I don't even want to say too much. I want to give it away. But, um, anyway, the idea would sort of be like, you know, if, if there ever was that instance where like, little clues were being left for you and you don't listen to them how absolutely infuriating it must be to the person who's like the the grand cosmic puppeteer yeah because they're like come on i sent you a whole row right look at them like how did you not oh i know right it's just like you're just it's like at some point it's like it makes you feel like am i just being like really ignorant like intentionally ignorant or something in the moment right like you know what yeah you would hate to like get to the afterlife and they're like well we gave you all sorts of signs to have a fourth child and like you just like steamrolled right past them like you were all over it man and like you saw them you even understood them. Yeah, we, have, just, we have a podcast recording of yeah, you recounting listen, these you things. talked about it. Like, uh, well, I don't know what to tell you. It's like, like, yeah. <laughs> hindsight is she was supposed. She was pretty important, but uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Goodness, good. Look at, look at they're this. Like, they're like flipping the clipboard. So much over. paperwork. Like, I can't man. even. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, well, you missed out. <laughs> like, oh man. Bless. I know. And then you're just then it's like, yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's like it's like even now we're talking about. It, I'm like, oh gosh. No oh, man. Oh boy. Like, people, I'm gonna get comments from people now, and they're gonna be like, Jay, are you kidding me, bro? Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Kidding. Uh, what? Yeah. Are, they, are you kidding you? No, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Yeah. Thanks. 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 Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah. So I feel like, I feel like I'm going to get a call from Beth tonight and she's going to be like, what did you guys talk about on the pop? <laughs> um, I don't know. I have, I have reviewed all these things with Beth as well. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Okay. okay it, there. I mean, I could keep she, going. She's not it, in the dark. No, she's not. She's not. She, I, and, I, Yes, told her the ways in which I felt like possibly God was communicating with me. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. H- have I not <laughs> even asked you myself sometime in the past like month and a half whether or not this was like something you would consider? Um, I don't know. You might have. Okay. Okay. Yeah. As you started telling it, I was like, I'm pretty sure I've asked you very recently if this is something that would ever be in the cards. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, 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 I, I, yeah. I. I. Sh- sh- at the moment, at the moment, no. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Good, <clears throat> good heart stop. Sounds good. Well, you got one last transition left in you? Sure. Ben, I've had this on here for uh, a couple of weeks here, and it's a much lighter topic, so oh. we'll just transition away from the meaning of the universe and yeah, right, whether right, right. or not uh, deities are speaking directly to <laughs> us. <laughs> then it's also just like the audacity to think that I'm important enough to be spoken to by like such a power, but then it's also like, no, that's the way it's supposed to work. You're supposed to have a relationship with that being, and it's like, oh, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah maybe that? this is what it's like. I don't know. Anyway, we're not talking about that. I'm going to talk about something way, way, um, way less important, but okay. also possibly more important to you guys' daily existence. Okay. okay. All right. Lay down. All right. Lay down. All right. It is the question of pancakes versus waffles. What? I know. I know. Oh my gosh! My brain literally just went through both sides and was like, "Well, it's obvious. It's obviously." Exactly. It's a very difficult question to answer. It is a very difficult question okay. to answer. Like, okay, do you do you have an answer to it? Uh, but you know, I'm, I'm I think I'm more I'm 
a waffle person. Okay. I prefer okay. waffles okay. to pancakes. You still seem like there was a, like a mild hesitation. Well, in your I make pancakes a lot for the kiddos, okay, but we yeah. did just recently get some like Mickey Mouse waffle maker yeah, things. Got, yeah, mom got and them for us all for Christmas. I, boy, I sure do enjoy that. Waffles are more work, is the thing. I think a little. They're not even. They're hey, not I was even. gonna say it's really not. That it's really bad. not that much more. Yeah. No, it's not. So you know what? Waffles wow. is my answer. Waffles. I enjoyed them more. But here's the thing. Okay. I feel like What's whenever it comes up, like it'd be like, do you like pancakes or waffles? There's always someone in the room is like, I'm really more into French toast. And I'm always like, okay, okay. This is this is where my this is where my beef comes in. Okay. Oh no, oh no, J beef <laughs> inbound. This is where my beef goes. Like it, like if you're if you're debating the merits between pancakes and waffles, which is basically a shapes argument. Yeah. At the right. end of the day. Okay. Essentially, it's more I mean, or less the same thing. You, you could make waffles from pancake batter, probably. Yeah. You un, absolutely un, can. Un, untested scientifically, but I most did likely. it last weekend. Okay. In fact, tested, they, confirmed. In fact, you. I mean, normally at least the difference is normally that like waffles have like a little bit more oil in them so they can get a little bit crispier. Okay. That's basically the main difference. So, so, that so you could do either with each, you know, like, we don't, we don't want crispy pancakes. Yeah, <laughs> maybe some people do. Maybe that's okay. how you enjoy okay. it. The point is the point is when you're debating this, it's a fun thing to debate because there's no right or wrong answer. Sure. Right. Like some people just like pancakes. Some people like waffles. They're mostly the same thing. It's fine, but I cannot stand it when people are like, I prefer French toast and I'm like, we're not talking about French toast. <laughs> Wait <Okay>? a second. <laughs> when, like, first of all, like, of course you prefer French toast. That's a whole different food. They're not. They're not in the same category, Ben. So, so I don't think you, you're not like like pancakes to waffles. You're comparing apples to different shaped apples, and suddenly you've brought in oranges, and someone's like, "It's the same. It's the same." I prefer French toast, and I'm like, "It's not the same. It's not. No, it's a way more decadent, indulgent dish with syrup and fruit and compotes, and like it's not this. It is. Of course, you prefer French toast. Are you kidding? Everyone prefers French toast. So, so you're you are in agreement that like it's like this. This is like you have just damaged the argument entirely. Yes, as it stood because it, because if we once you bring French toast in the conversation, it's like well then the conversation's over. The conversation's it's over. It's like everybody agrees French toast is better. Yes. Okay. So so and then but at that point in time, the real question is is that like why. Why is there ever pancakes or waffles on any menu ever when you could always just have French toast? Because French toast is more indulgent. It's worse for you. It, oh, is it? Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know. I think when you're at a restaurant and you're ordering French toast, it's never just like, you know, basic French toast. It's normally a pretty done up French it, it, it's toast. It's like like loaded. It's like loaded. Yeah, yeah like exactly. Extra turbo. <laughs> exactly. Like, <laughs> like, it's exactly. It's, French it's, toast is like an extra turbo brunch item. It's you know? the, do you feel as though it's the powdered <clears throat> sugar that tends to set the French toast off? Because you could also put like chocolate chips inside of pancakes or waffles. You could do it. You could do it. Which could, ups their decadent factor. I mean, you can you can make the other ones more decadent, but the other ones like on their own don't require decadence. They're just like a they are a great at being what they are like just like by themselves. Yeah. There's yeah. no bad pancakes, you know. Like you can have great, you can have amazing pancakes, but even if you just put together like if you just throw together like the Bisquick pancake mix, you're gonna have a good time. It, right. No, I understand where you're yeah. coming from. Here here's a curiosity or a question that I have. Because I, I think it's I think that this is like one of those things where it's like when it comes to good food, sometimes I wonder, and this is going to be a hot take, but I, sometimes <laughs> a, I, a hot cake, a hot cake, <laughs> if you will. Um, but like sometimes I wonder whether or not we can enjoy foods on a scale of one to five. And it's like, and that's it. And a lot more foods are five than we're willing to give it credit for overall, which is to say that like when you go to like a super nice dinner and you order like the absurdly expensive like filet mignon mm -hmm. and they come out and like there's cracked peppercorns on top of it or like a like a sauce or like the perfectly whipped mashed potatoes and green beans. It's like, like there's right. a certain amount like going into your mental state that is providing you with like the additional attention, the focus on the meal that you are having, right? Like the atmosphere is directing your enjoyment as much as the meat itself. Exactly. So it's yeah. like, it's like in, and you're aware of the added cost. You're aware of like the, the cachet of the restaurant around <laughs> you, you know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, there's a fancy waiter. Like there's, there was a water water menu here and we got to pick a fancy water yeah you know to be poured for the table it's like it's not just like tap ice water it's like do you want like this bottled water from the ground roots of 
Right, Yggdrasil? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. It's like, we're oh. not supposed to take it, but for you, you can have it for eight bucks. Um, I know the restaurant you're talking about, and the water was more than eight bucks. Yeah, it, it was good water, too, though. But, but was it only good because I was paying attention to it? Because sometimes... Yeah, I think probably. But this is this is the question, though. So it's like, in my mind, I'm like, like, when you go to these restaurants, is there some part of what you're experiencing that you're enjoying is like is everything else but the food it's like food is capped at five and it's not that i'm trying to say that five is like an alarmingly high uh bar to ever accomplish it's like it, what i'm actually saying is like you like a flaming hot cheeto is a five right but like <laughs> but you bought a whole bag of them you know there's like right. 173 of them in there right you know you got plenty to you eat. got plenty of fives man so, yeah it's like and it cost you a dollar 99 at the convenience store and you're you know you're you're on a road trip i know what you mean. like there are yes like there are times when you're eating like gas station snack food and it is like th the best thing you've ever had. Oh, my goodness, my you gracious. Uh, uh, a taco and cheese taquito from, yeah. from oh. 7-Eleven. We've all been we've all enjoyed the best meal of our lives in the parking lot of a 7-Eleven at least once. Yes. Okay. Yes, yeah. exactly. It's like it is like it's like food perfected. It's like right. why, why are there Michelin star restaurants when there are taquitos? I know. I know. But then there's also like really like night. You've all you've also been to like a very fancy place with a steak and you're like, this is like the best thing I've ever consumed. It is. I know yeah. it is. It is. And it's like there's no doubt about it. And it's not it's like I can't even say that like I don't genuinely enjoy that experience like of of being there and like doing that thing like like when we went to vegas um earlier or back at the tail end of last year for the for the music festival we went to like one of these restaurants that like brother-in-law mike found because he's like a food nut and he was like you know like let's like let's go find like real good food and so the place yeah. we went i can't remember if they had a michelin star or if they were like trying to get their first michelin star but it was that kind of a restaurant where they would like bring you your dish and it would come in like a small stone votive shaped cup and it was like air sol you know, whipped raisins and asparagus oh, or something. Why did I say raisins? <laughs> I don't know where that came from. It wasn't raisins. <laughs> it was anything else. But you know, it's like they didn't have whipped aerosol raisins. They didn't have, I mean, maybe they did. Who knows? <laughs> but like the point is, is that like the, the like what they are doing, like like you know, from a scientific perspective, mechanically with the food is remarkable. Like they have taken a food and they have turned it into a different kind of food completely. And it's like a, it's a joyous experience, but like part of the joy is just that it's so neat, yeah. you know, but like, it's, it's not like, you know, you in, and maybe this is also part of it, but like, I wouldn't eat like that one spoonfuls worth of food and then be like, man, I wish I had like 97 more spoonfuls of that. Right. It's like may, maybe part of the point is that you can eat one spoonful and you're like, you're like satiated. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, that was delicious. Right. That, that bite was all I needed. I right. Well, I would never buy this like a bag of flaming hot Cheetos. Right. You know, who would do if that? If you were just in the back of the kitchen and they had like 50 of them laid out, would you would you just go to town? Yeah, that's the question. Yeah. yeah like, well, like given the opportunity, would you? Because I like for most of the dishes, as much as I enjoyed them, I don't think I would. Right. Um, and so like part of what my argument would be to take it back to like waffles and pancakes <laughs> is that there's a very real possibility in French toast. There's really a possibility they're all fives. You know, it's like uh -huh. there are certain days of the week where it's like like a chocolate chip pancake is exactly what I want. And there's other days where it's like there's nothing better than Mickey shaped waffle. Right. Yeah. You know, but then, yeah, you get these like like uh, like a Nutella filled French toast covered in syrup and, and yeah, whipped sugar. cream and powdered sugar. It's and, like, yeah. well, well, gosh darn, is it dessert or breakfast? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's a whole meal. It is. A, yeah, it is. Yeah. You know, packed complete with like. 1400 calories yeah yeah you don't need to eat again after you had the french toast yeah for yeah, sure yeah yeah um but so anyway that's been that's been my big curiosity lately is is that like because i do think sometimes even when i'm like in the fancy restaurant or whatever and i'm like enjoying the heck out of the meal it's like this is really really good but there are still 7-eleven taquitos that exist out in the world they're still out there there are, so this is um uh, there is a uh, me and beth watch Good Mythical Morning with Rhett and Link. Yeah, like I've, I've basically heard of them. every. Yeah, you've heard of them. Yeah, they're pretty good. They're like internet famous. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're, they are. Yeah, <laughs> they are very good at what they do. Um, anyway, they they have a recurring um, like show called like Frozen Fancy Feast. Okay, and what they will do is they will 
get like the frozen food version of an item. They will get like the McDonald the, and then for the same item, the same like item. Yeah, they'll get like the, you know, the McDonald's version of it and then like the Olive Garden version of it and then like a like high end Michelin star version of it. Okay. So the, you know, you might have like this this frozen burger came from the yeah, the frozen food aisle and this is from McDonald's and this is, you know, all okay. the way up. I'm following. Yeah, you got yeah, it. So yep. yeah, all the different price points. But and then they'll sample them all and say which one they like the most, but they don't know as they're doing it which one came from where. Okay. And like obviously in that example, it'd probably be pretty easy to tell just on sight. Sure. But yes, like yeah, yeah. A lot yeah. of the time, and a lot of the time, it's like sometimes it's pretty obvious what the frozen one is. Sometimes it's not. But like they'll go through, and it's like it is very interesting to like see them try the same dish at four very different price points and how like. Th- like the the gourmetness of it affects or doesn't affect it. Okay. Like sometimes it'll be so clear cut, like the fancy one is just like leagues better. But the other times it'll be like, yeah, the McDonald's version is just amazing. Like this this food is best enjoyed as fast food, and you can make fancy versions of it. But like this is just the best way to do it. Yeah. Right. You right. Know? Yes. Like, yeah. No. And yeah. And so then then it, then it's like, well, yeah. Like why 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 go more elaborate and, right. and that that is like one of those things like you know you meet um, so similarly at our at our water restaurant where we had our eight dollar uh, or more expensive Norse you know carbonated whatever yeah um, <laughs> Uh, I, I believe the water we got was from a thousand feet underground. Okay, okay, there. It is. I want to yeah. say is what we what we decided <laughs> what we to try. Like, we were all just so flummoxed by the fact that there was a water menu that it was just sort of like we got to do we it. We got to right? try you know? it. Yeah. yeah, like a water menu. Right. Is, yeah. I've Why never not? even seen this. No, it was it threw us off. <laughs> but so then the other thing that happened at this particular restaurant was a sommelier came to the table to like explain to us like which which you know wine would pair best with each of our respective entrees or whatever, and like sommelier sommeliers as someone who exists out in the world are extremely interesting to me when it comes to this particular question because they are on some level proof that people are capable of tasting things and like almost getting like I think of like stats on the back of like a baseball card yeah. if you will and it would almost be like if you could look at the front of the baseball card and know all the information on the back of the card just by looking at the front of the card like it feels like that's what sommeliers do like mm-hmm. they they can take like with with nothing else you know a sip of wine and they can be like mm, yes okay this comes from the you know the foothills of southern France and they're probably you know like this kind of grape grown in this particular season and harvested just before ripeness or whatever and it's like you got all that from that sip like it's like i don't know it well enough to appreciate it on that level right, yeah, like no like i can't even name five towns in france yeah you know, let alone which one my grapes came from <laughs> or what season they were harvested during yeah so it's like like if if in fact there is some accuracy to that particular ability it's like okay that makes me think that there have been instances like where i've gone to a restaurant and tasted something that was truly remarkable but then the other issue is that like 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 maybe that's like where food goes from like a one to a five, but then you have to unlock like six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. You know, and like like ten is your master sommelier, like where where they can like do this type of thing. Yeah, I do. I mean, you were kind of talking about the setting and stuff earlier, and I think I do think that all is very important sometimes to like the kind of food you're even able to enjoy sometimes. Yes. Like, for example, Tomorrow night we're all going to like the uh, the the local professional hockey team. Yes, here. Yeah, the the rail yard dogs. The dogs. The dogs. Yeah, and um, we were just talking earlier out with the whole crew that like, oh my gosh, the chicken tenders are so good. And it's like, I do. I'm thinking about them right now. I'm gonna get them tomorrow. Oh, absolutely, they, like, without doubt. The chicken tenders at the dogs games are amazing, and they're so good. But it's like, would I order those same chicken tenders like at a restaurant? No. But in the same way, like I would never go get like. You know, if they were even if they were serving like gourmet fancy steak at a hockey game, like I I could never. Yeah, you know, yeah right, like, right. It's <laughs> like no, like this is this is not the. No. What, what am I gonna like cut it like on like on like a like a paper plate like on my yeah. knees while I'm watching the game? You know, it's. I like, mean, like, even if we had like you know, which the to be clear, the dogs don't have like box seats, but imagining they had like indoor box seats and you could watch it behind glass and someone could bring you the steak and you could sit there and watch it. It's just like this is not. It's like. It, it I don't feel like it would be as good like when you're 
when you're at a hockey game, you're not eating steak. You can't. You're not eating a fancy meal. Right. That's right. not. You know, it's not best enjoyed that way. No, it's not. You know. You're right. Like you're right. I want. I want dumb concession food, and I want to drink like a you know moderately cheap beer, and I want to like yell at hockey people, and it's gonna be fun. <laughs> like I totally know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No. I go to up to two games a year. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Um. And yeah. So that's that's. But but that's. To me, it's a fascinating part of the underlying question is that like if the environment is impacting you so much, like there's obviously added skill that's going on in the preparation. Like, like no part of me is doubting that like, you know, when you go and get like a steak from like a fancy restaurant and like all the, the accoutrement or whatever, like, you know, like there's, there's no doubt that it is in fact prepared by someone who has more experience preparing it at this caliber right like i I, like that is the aspect of it that i would absolutely not doubt the the question is just like whether or not like it's like i think where where i get like in like where i go to war inside of my own head is like it like i love doing this i know that this is like of like a way that i enjoy spending time like with my friends and going and doing something Mm -hmm. like i seek it out for sure but it's also like is it that good or like, does, can it beat the taquito? Is, right. it, is, is this I, bite of food as good as a bite of a taquito? I think you, you really have to like, you do have to like play the location a little bit. Yeah. You know, like, like if you go back, like you're going back to the, the fancy frozen feast game or whatever. Sometimes it's like, it is no surprise to me sometimes that certain objects are better at the lower price point at the lower price points. Like when, like, I think they've done like tacos before and it's like, yeah, no, like gourmet tacos are never going to be street tacos. Like they're just not right. Like tacos are street food and they're the best there, right? Like this yeah. is this that it is and and like they always are. It's like and like it's like burgers are the same way. It's like you can get a fancy burger and you can get fancy meat and whatever, but it's just like like that you, you don't you that's not why you went to the gourmet restaurant though was to get a burger like they'll make it for you that's right. not why you went there right you know right. like don't you go like if you want a good burger go to go to that bar down the street where you know they make the good burgers where they smash them and do the grill thing you know we have a place across the street it's called um jack brown's here it is like so their burgers are insane. They are. They're so good. They're, and and <clears throat> it's like it's so strange to me too because like when we when we moved to like our current office and I knew it was going to be like nearby, I was like we're going to be able to do Jack Browns. And I yeah. was like this goes back to like the original conversation about like the little Debbie snacks and like our lunches where it's like eventually you get used to them and this is one of those things where it's like we've been an obscene number of times. Yes. You know, and it's like, and I still love it. Like there is never it's a day always where there's a treat. Yeah. There's never yeah. a day where someone's like, should we do Jack Browns? And I'm like, mm, mm. I don't know if I'm feeling it. It's like, yeah. I'm always feeling it. Well, yeah. Know? The answer is like, I always want to. Some days I'm always like, sometimes I'm like, do I, um, I know that's not as good for me, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> get bananas in the uh, office. I'll be fine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm drinking my diet, Doctor Pete, my, for yeah, my soda yeah, stream. Exactly, I've made enough good decisions today. Make it a double. Make, make it a double make patty. A double. Yeah, if you want my order, double cowboy with fries. <laughs> but seriously, if you come to Roanoke, go to Jack Brown's. It is like just the. Bur- I mean, all they serve is burgers, but um, and it's just this little dive bar, and it's awesome. It is awesome. Yeah. it's worth it. Definitely check it out. Yeah, but anyway, so that's that'd be my that'd be my question or curiosity for people today is like what like what are your thoughts when it comes to how delicious a bite of food can actually be and like how much do you think or do you have a, a special moment where you like knew you took like the best bite of your life or like oh. like you know because that's you, yeah can you go back to what you think is the best bite of food of your life <sighs> man let me think let me think let me think i feel oh man i don't know my mind is racing through like so many different instances there is a place there is a place that we went to in austin texas Mm. called suerte suerte and it that place is good <laughs> it is really good um but i feel like they had these um it's like a like a like a beef it is like a beef taco of some kind right yeah. yes. is, is it was it a taco mm-hmm. and the, it, i mean that <clears throat> that is probably the best bite of food that i've ever you had. ever had yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That, that i can think of okay uh, right off the top of my head how about yeah. you um uh, this is i mean not to uh, I, I mean, it might have been in the last month 
No way. Yeah, just and I think it was the the dinner that mom made for my 36th birthday. Oh, and cause she that just was like, so good. And like this is one of those things where it's like every like so our mom, I think we even talked about it already. She makes these ribs and I've never been anywhere else where the ribs are even close. No, I and know like, you're I'll right. get ribs at other places and they're not the same. I, I don't know what I don't know how she's doing it. It's like magic, Um, but like I'll like talk like I'll uh, it's one of those things where like in between in between rib consumption. I will be like they I remember I remember them fondly because my mom made them as we were growing up and like they were great, but cer- like they must not be as good as I remember. They must not be, but like man, we had them just earlier this month and I was like these are not only as good as I remember, but better, but better. Like, I mean, I was just I mean, I was literally smiling about that that meal for like three days. Yeah, like I mean, it was that good. And I, I don't remember having food of that like that food experience in like a very, very long time. So that is my current answer. And that's just my favorite food is that is that mom is ribs. that mom's ribs. I know that's probably just such a such a traditional answer. Yeah, mom's cooking. I, like, I know. Yeah, I, don't yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I stand I by stand it. By it. You would do. Yeah, we used to say growing <clears throat> up that she like when she retires, she needs to open up like Mary's kitchen. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, I feel like it could be like it a could like just ca- be it could just be Mary's rib shack. You know, that's all. Yes. Yeah, yeah we should get right? her a food truck. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Ribs all the time. It'll Woo! be great. Oh man. Okay. I, I can I can feel this. This idea. You know, you know how I also knew it was not just me is that I mean, I think Luke ate as many as me. I know. You yes, know? I know. And I mean, yes. And like Luke is like a like a like he's still small. I mean, he's you know? mostly ribs. Yeah, he's yeah. mostly ribs. Yeah. Yeah. Especially after that meal, especially <laughs> after that meal, you can see all of his, you know, Oh man, that's so funny. That's so funny. But yeah, so be sure to email us your your favorite bites, or if e- even just answer the question: Do you do you think that there is such a thing as like just maxing out the quality of the bite that you're having, and then and then does the conversation just become like how scarce does the bite become? I think one of my favorite things to do with food is like trying to find like. Like I know a bunch of dishes that I like and trying to find like trying those dishes in different places and trying to find like the best version of a thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know? that, that is always really fun. Like when you can like dial in on like a specific something. Or, I mean, I remember you used to actually do this with burgers here yeah. in Roanoke and it would just be like pop from burger place to burger place to burger place. And it was just like, try all of them. And then it's like, okay, this one, this place has the best one. Yeah. 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 Well, seen the city tap room, Blue Ridge burger, super good here. Although you know what, if you can get that, they put it on the menu. It used to be burger of the month thing. Yeah. They put it on the menu when they had it as the burger of the month and when I had it at its best, it had fried onion petals on it and they switched it to onion ring for some reason like it. I mean severe severe downgrade. So see if they'll sub it for you. Did, but, did it go from a five to a four from a no, from an ungodly six to a five? I mean, it just yeah, probably that. OK, just from an ungodly six to a five. OK, I mean, it's still I mean, <laughs> it's still insane. <laughs> <laughs> it's still good. I, it's, that's another one of those things. I remember I, the last, I think the last time we went, I was like, I'm doing it. I'm getting the Blue Ridge Burger <laughs> and go. I got it. And I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> this is so good. <laughs> way, way to go, me. Way to go, me. <laughs> like, you, I, this is like I'll make a decision and then I'll just doubt myself forever. <laughs> And I'll try it again. I'm like, should just trust in my instincts. Way to go. I, yeah. did. I had it right. I, I had, had it right. right. Anyway, all feedback to <laughs> popcornculturepod at gmail.com. Or if you'd like to support the show, we would very much appreciate it. You can do so at patreon.com slash popcorn culture. There's just a variety of different fun and cool options over there. Uh, one of the things that we do is a, a like bi-monthly pop Q&A, uh, which mm-hmm. basically starts at the like the $5 tier or above. And it's just like a fun time to come in. And it's kind of like it's own little private episode of the pop but like you guys are live on stream at the same time and then we've got like preloaded questions so it's really just a hooting and hollering good time so if again if you want to check it out patreon.com slash popcorn culture link in all the show notes and all the various places but otherwise until next time pop pop pop